And it, we're going to go into a model that uh, Kyle actually put together for us out on the uh, tutorials uh, page in the uh, in the fall. You'll see uh, the video of creating the water bottle. If you uh, don't have uh, the water bottle created yet, you can start by going through uh, Kyle's video and uh, creating the water bottle. Uh, we had another webinar earlier in the week on the zoo license manager. So I kind of carry in that theme on here. And uh, I put a decal on the uh, bottle and uh, I call it the, uh, the zoo water bottle. So um, our first uh, project will be to set up the zoo water bottle on a layout. And before we do that, let's look at just a couple things that will make access to the layout commands a little bit uh, better. I'm going to right click up here at the end of the toolbar. I'm going to go down to show toolbar and I'm going to scroll down to the block toolbar. I'm going to be using um, block insert to bring in uh, a title block. Uh, eventually. So uh, I want to open that uh, toolbar up. Another toolbar that we have with commands specific to layouts is the layout toolbar. So I'm going to open that one up too. And using the Rhino 5 toolbars, I'm going to drag the block tab into the layout toolbar. So they're now a group. And if you're going um, to be trying this, uh, make sure you drag the toolbar by the tab. And once they're added together here into a group, you can drag them into a part of the screen where you have room. What I like to do is to drag them by the kind of the title bar, I guess, uh, you'll call it on uh, the toolbar group. I like to drag it over to the side here so that it docks vertically. And by uh, docking vertically, I can get to my layout commands and I can also efficiently get to my block commands. So that's one thing that I want to do to get ready uh, to uh, put these uh, layouts together. The um, other thing that uh, I want to uh, point out here, and I can get my, my pen going, uh, we have um, object snaps down here. So you might want to look at what the settings are uh, as we you know, go through uh, the presentation. Um, right now, just because of the markup tool here. It looks like it kind of blanks out that area, but if I hit escape you can see uh, which object snaps I have set. I usually keep, this is just the way I work, I usually keep a lot of object snaps going and then when I notice one getting in the way I'll turn it off. I use the same theory for smart track. I usually keep it on until it's getting in the way and then turn it off. So I have it on right now. Uh, I also have planar that may not be necessary right now since the geometry is already done. The OSnap part of the status bar now enables and disables the OSnap and uh, I've got gumball going so there'll be various times that we'll be using uh, gumball. So those are the modeling aids that uh, I have set. I also want to uh, take a look in options and one of the ways you can get to options is from the, the yellow gear up here. You can go to tools and options. So options is broken down into two parts. The options that are saved in the Rhino model and Rhino options that are basically saved in the registry. Uh, when I go from model to model, my appearance doesn't change. My aliases don't change. These are all things that whenever I'm working on Rhino, I have set. But if I go to somebody else's machine, they may not have the exact settings I do in Rhino options. One of the Rhino options that, that I use is linked viewports. And of course, those only apply to model viewports, but um, that's one of the options that I, I turn on here. Document properties, these are all properties that are going to be saved in this model. And I do have some notes that have kind of the, the steps that we're going to go through here 
Uh, I'm also going to look at the note, the note panel to the right and I have those steps on. What I wanted to look at here are the units. The model units are inches. The layout units are also inches. And the only rule that we have here as far as units go is that the unit for the model and the unit for the layout need to be in the same unit system. So if you're using imperial units, inches or feet, then you want to keep both the model and the layout in imperial units. That doesn't mean that you can't have your model set to feet and your layout set to inches, but they're part of the same unit system. Same with metric. If I have my model unit set to meters, then I want to have my layout unit set to millimeters. And you may be thinking, well, I want to mix those because I want to do my model in millimeters, but I want to be able to set it up on the layout in inches. Uh, you can. There is a, a way that we help out with that. Uh, but when you're here in the model, you still need to have them in the same unit system. And then we have a way to translate the layout size at the time that you're creating the layout into whatever uh, unit system kind of makes sense. The settings here for the model, they, they need to be in the same unit system. And we can talk about that a little bit more when we get going, but I want to lay that out right now as one of the uh, one of the rules for for layouts. Up under annotation, we're going to spend a lot of time here. In this particular model right now, we do not have annotation scale on, which is typical when you open a model that was uh, created in a previous version of Rhino. But we'll turn this on kind of strategically here in a little bit. Uh, dimensions, we have a dimension style. Um, we also have hatch styles and line type styles. And all of these are under the category annotation. And I'm going to uncheck uh, hatch scaling too. We'll turn these back on as we get into the layout. 